Channel 7 is John Orchick, but he was sporting a new look, as you can see. There was also Fitzroy coach Robbie Walsh, who did such a marvellous job of taking the side into the five with that last-minute burst in the final stages of the season. Mickey Conlon was here enjoying the festivities, and the large crowd was entertained by a number of people, amongst them a loyal Fitzroy supporter in Johnny Chester. Former President Keith Wiegard also joined the celebrations, and he was handing over to the general manager of 3AW, Mr Brian White, who was here at his first official function as the new chairman of the Fitzroy Football Club. On the menu this morning, of course, there was orange juice, sausages, chops, but the main thing on the menu was a Fitzroy Premiership in 1985. And the man hoping to guide Fitzroy to that Premiership in 85 is the new president, Brian White. Brian, first of all, congratulations on the appointment. You must be delighted with the roll-up this morning. We've had uh, actually two very good days of uh, roll-ups to Fitzroy functions, Peter. Uh, we had a, a lunch yesterday, plus this uh, brunch today, um, and so we're very delighted, yeah. Getting back to the performances of 84, it really was a Herculean performance by the side to get into the five. Um, you must have been very encouraged by that performance looking towards next year. Well, you could say that the, the whole of the last two seasons have been practice for next year. Uh, we've yet to crack a final in the last couple of years, but I'm quite sure that uh, that little bit of extra experience that the boys have got each of these last two, two seasons is going to turn them in good stead. Uh, I think the way they played to get into the five is going to be something that uh, uh, supporters of this club will remember for a long time, that, uh, that, that last round where they had everything working against them but they still cracked them. I think it probably took an awful lot out of them, mentally as well as physically, which is probably why we didn't get through uh, past that first of the finals. Uh, but next year I feel quite confident it's going to be a different story. Brian, you were saying that you had one very special qualification in becoming the chairman of the Fitzroy Football Club. Yeah, I'm the only guy that's uh, shorter than Bradley Gotts in the whole team. At least I think I am. <laughs> now, Brian, as an ex-Sydney sider, being part of Grand Final Day 1984, how does the atmosphere around Melbourne strike you? Oh, uh, it is... Uh, it really is totally different, Peter. The, uh, uh, I've, I've been to many Rugby League Grand Finals over the, over the years in Sydney, although I must admit it's about 15 years since I went to one. Um, rugby League had lost its attractions for me before I came to Melbourne. And I, I, I must say, the very first game I ever saw here was a grand final, and I just couldn't believe it. And uh, that sort of sensation has stayed with me ever since. I think the, uh, the atmosphere in Melbourne at the time of a, a grand final or a final season is just something that uh, I don't think you could expect to see anywhere else in the world. Uh, the whole city seems to be swept up in it. Uh, everybody seems to care about what's going to happen. Um, one of the things I think about Fitzroy in particular is that we get the sort of roll-up we've had here today and again yesterday uh, because I believe there's a tremendous uh, support for Fitzroy that uh, somehow or other we haven't quite tapped in the past and uh, that's one of the things I'm going to be working on very hard myself to, to tap that more general feeling of support for Fitzroy uh, than I think we've been able to get before. Uh, our move to Victoria Park this coming season I think might just be the catalyst that we need to uh, to show just how well supported we really are. Now what about a tip for this afternoon, Brian? We can't let you go without getting a selection. I'd have to say Hawthorne. I think uh, they're a very, very professional team. Uh, they don't have the ups and downs that Essendon seems to have had in the last uh, season. And that's why I'd go for Fitzroy. For, uh, there you go. I'll go for Fitzroy next year, but we'll say Hawthorne today. Well, a Freudian slip, but uh, good luck to Fitzroy in 1985 and good luck with the new position, Brian. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. So that was the situation here at the World Trade Centre this morning as the celebrations and preparations continue for the 1984 VFL Grand Final. And isn't it great to be in Melbourne on this very special one day in September? Cheers. Thanks, Peter. One of the more pleasant tasks to be done this morning. We'll take a break now from the MCG and be back soon.
Aquanaut, the automatic pool cleaner pre-programmed to clean your entire pool quickly, quietly and efficiently without your ever having to lift a finger. Aquanaut is programmed to make circles, left and right turns, straight runs, climbing up and down the walls, into and out of every corner. For a sparkling clean pool, Aquanaut, the new generation pool cleaner that thinks for itself. Hey, look at this. It's the Mobile Wizard, the new fun toy for kids three to eight years of age. It assists coordination and strength of arm and chest muscles. The Mobile Wizard can be used outdoors or indoors. It's light and maneuverable. The Mobile Wizard is easy to assemble. Replacement parts are available and comes with a 12 months guarantee. So get a Wizard and whiz around for years. Brought to you by Easy Tips Australia. Available from these stores. A lot of people think using comedy is complicated, but really it's so simple, even a general manager can do it. Hello, Comet. All you have to do is pick up the phone, we come to your office and pick up the package. Why, even a managing director can do that. Hello, Comet. Using Comet is so simple that even a chairman of the board can do it. Hello, uh, uh... Comet. When it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. Somewhere beneath the streets, it waits. At first, no one believed. Now, no one will forget. Alligator, the thrilling Sunday movie premiere at 8.30 on 7. Win, lose or draw, the grand final edition of World of Sport has it all. A complete roundup of the day, plus live crosses to the aftermatch celebrations. A special edition of the World of Sport, tonight at 8.30. Well, the crowd's starting to pour in, of course, today for the grand final day, and the man with the best view in town at the moment is Peter Donegan up in the Seven Sport helicopter. Thanks once again, Graham. Well, at the moment, we're looking at the city of Melbourne, and it's a very special day in the city every year, grand final day, and this year is no exception. And the city skyline, of course, only probably a kilometre or so from that great ground, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, which is looming up in our sights now. The site, of course, the Yarra River, which you can see in the screen. And as we head past the Twin Towers of Collins Place and Nauru House and track down towards the MCG, we can tell you that it really is a magnificent site from up here. And looking at the traffic side of things, we've had quite a good look. Uh, Hoddle Street and Punt Road still moving quite OK. You shouldn't experience any problems there. And as you do head towards the MCG, of course, the traffic will slow down a little bit. As you can see, the car park area is filling up rapidly and nearly all spots are taken in the car park. As far as the weather is concerned, it's getting a little bit more cloudy, but things still looking good from up here at the half-time break, of course, in the Reserve Cup. But uh, what a great day of football and sporting action we have in front of us, culminating, of course, with the big clash between Hawthorne and Essendon in the 1984 VFL Grand Final. We'll be back with more a little later. Once again, let's return to Graham McNeigh. Well, thank you, Peter, and it's uh, deja vu because we've had a little altercation before the start of the second half, very much the same as we did prior to the start of the game, except this time it was confined to two players. And uh, is it that man, Daryl Cox, in there again, was it? No, OJ. No, it was OJ and, and Danny uh, Hughes. Hughes. OK, having a little wrestle there. I can see the goal umpire writing something down in the little book. He's either checking the results of a race or he, in fact, is getting an appointment fixed up for next week well umpires are uh, Russo and uh, Morrow well Jeff Morrow and umpire John Russo they've done a pretty good job in this match so far a very difficult game to umpire with all the niggling and uh, fiery stuff going on but they've kept pretty good strict control and they've reported a number of players and they need eyes in their back of the head wouldn't they Peter I'll say they wouldn't they look they're still uh, that, that sort of thing there's nothing much in it but it can lead to fisty cuffs and uh, uh, well, I don't think it's needed. I think the tenseness and the tight play is needed, but certainly not the brawling and wrestling on the ground. Well, at this stage, no, you should be focusing on the ball. Start of the third quarter and a 22-point lead to Melbourne, so probably the first 10 minutes of this is going to be crucial to see if Carlton can get back. Melbourne take it out of the centre of the ground. They're going backwards, though. Finally, it's Wright, who now goes from centre-half back up to half-forward. Not a well-placed kick. It was there looking for Tossel. He tried for the free kick, didn't get it. Carlton clearing now out towards... That's Ricky Nixon across on the uh, 
half-back flank. Kicks down towards half-forward and a neat mark there to Melbourne. Tossel, is it? No, Paul O'Brien. O'Brien, half-back flank. Outer side of the ground. Not a well-placed kick in towards the centre. Carlton trying to uh, bottle it up over there. And the umpire rules that he'll have it. There'll be a bounce between wing and centre on the outer side. So Melbourne 6-9, Carlton 3-5, and that's a disappointing score in a grand final in the first half. Three Understandable goals. though, Graham, because of the intensity of the game. I think we'll see a lot of scrambly play today under the windy conditions as the ball comes up towards the half-forward line. A chance now for Frankie Regalo again on the left foot. That's a beautiful attempted goal. That's his fourth goal. What a kick that was from centre-half forward. He's put it through for his fourth. Actually, that was his third goal. Third um, goal, I should say. And that's, uh, he's kicked one in each quarter, and that was a very good kick. You'll see here, he snapped the ball up at centre-half forward. And he, as invariably, a lot of left-footers are good kicks for goal. And that was a beautiful, it's a beautiful kick. You'll see Regala, who trapped the ball one hand. The pack opened up for him, and he was more or less dead straight in front, but it was a beautiful <laughs> long kick. Good shot of Neil Gagan there on screen, trying to get back valiantly to touch that, and he couldn't make it. 7-9 to 3-5 with uh, the Melbourne in front. Malin, oh, they're tackling well now, the uh, Demons. The ball knocked out to Brett Bailey, scoops it back to uh, Teddy Fitch. He just drops the ball red hot. Now it's a road getting across to Batterston, who's done a lot of heavy work today. Up towards the full forward line, Brian Wilson came out. He's coming in the lender hand is Peter Thorne. Back it comes there to Greg Hutchison, who fires hurriedly down towards the forward pocket, but out of bounds of went on the full. Greg been a tremendous team man at Melbourne. In fact, he won the most valuable club man award at the Melbourne Football Club this year. He's been there many, many years, played about 100 senior games. Here's, oh, it should have been a free kick there to Withers behind the play. The umpire didn't see it. A tackle has been made by Batterston. He's claiming it's holding the ball against Brendan Hartley. The umpire, Jeff Morrow, having none of that. Scoreboard showing 7-9 Melbourne, Carlton 3-5. Rick Hutchison, in fact, has played total games, 96 games. He's kicked 21 goals. And, uh, well, he's played in many, many reserves games. This Teddy Fitch kicking it across the centre of the ground, up towards Daryl Cox. He couldn't take the mark, but he charges in after the football. It's kicked by Shane Robertson, out towards centre wing. Glenn Boland is hotly pressing him. Good play by Boland, keeping control of the football. And once again, umpire Morrow will come in and bounce it, halfway between centre wing and half forward for Melbourne. Another bounce, 51 plays 23, and we're at the three-minute mark of the third quarter. Honeybun, Malin, gets his kick, but under pressure. Sheldon in there. Melbourne with possession, and they get it out to Batterston. He's picked up a few possessions. Fidge from behind, almost a mark in front there. I think it was Nixon. Ball loose again. Melbourne uh, with a chance at centre-half forward, well tapped on chance here for Wright but uh, weight of numbers tells out and uh, a good tackle sees the ball picked up by Alvin down towards Warren Ralph in the forward pocket an awkward bounce he tried to tap it back Daryl Cox handball not a good one kicked off the ground well by Warren Ralph now there's a chance here for Buckley if he can pick it up he's in the forward pocket on his own he fires at goal touched and forced through and running back I think it was Batterston and uh, it's deflected through for a, a point only. I think I said Cox before out in centre wing. I was wondering what he was doing down there. Of course, it was number 25 was Xavier Tanner. I think I might have called him Cox at one stage there. I didn't think he could cover that much territory as Cox brings it towards the half-back line. Hughes against Oja, and Darren, Darren Oja goes back and takes the mark. They were the two that were wrestling as we see the ball down towards Warren Ralph and it beats him over the line and out of bounds. Right in front of that Melbourne member stand and Warren's not having a good day. So far he has kicked one goal, two. And viewers through ADS and TVW have joined us. Welcome to this telecast. It's at the four and a half minute mark of the third quarter in the Channel 7 Reserves Grand Final for 1984 and Melbourne a 7951, Carlton 3624. Half forward flank. Melbourne members' side of the ground. Carlton badly need goals to get back into this game. The Melbourne side have been far too uh, good since about halfway through that uh, first quarter. There's the kick from Thorne towards Tossel. It comes loose to Bolan, beautifully roved by Glenn Bolan. He'll look for the long hand pass out to Teddy Fidge. Xavier Tanner's running over to lend a hand. Fidge has got it on half forward. Oh, tackle a beautiful tackle, but he shrugged it. Round the neck, that was. That was a good decision Ooh, by the boy. umpire, although the tackle was, was a little bit hard. it long enough? Well, the point was he had an ample opportunity to get rid of the ball. Agree with that. 
agree with that, Don, but well, I... That's the first time you've ever agreed with him. Well, he shrugged the tackle, I thought. Uh, whether he was held long enough was the big question. But still, the umpire's the man in charge, the man in white. Half forward flank still on the opposite side of the ground. This is the southern side of the ground as we see uh, Honey Bun getting it down to the ground. No free kick. Oh, yes, it was holding the man. I thought that, thought it was at first, but I thought the umpire was going to give it a miss. There's uh, Withers, centre wing, towards centre half forward. The lead has been made. Oh, that's a hamstring stretcher, that one. He nearly got there, Frankie Regalo. Good thing gets it wasn't in the hand. Cox. <laughs> that's right. Back to uh, Brett Bailey. Gets in the hand pass. Back towards half forward. This is little Mark Withers. Onto the left foot he goes. Beautiful pass to Kelly O'Gonnell. Wasn't sure whether to go or not then, Kelly. He ducks back and is going to kick it long. Oh, Wilson's made the lead to the pocket. He's led beautifully. Out he comes. Oh, couldn't take the mark. It's still in that forward pocket as Gagan forces the ball with Peter Thorne over the line and out of bounds. And there's Brian Wilson. Couldn't quite get to that mark in the pocket after a good pass. He was making it awkward for himself for a shot at goal if he did get it, Peter, leading so deep into the pocket. But here's the throw in. Knockout by all day. Cleared back down towards the boundary line. And I think another throw in. Yes, it will be on the... Members side of the ground and half forward flank for Melbourne. And Rucks and Rovers moving around now to contest this boundary throw in. These two have been at it all day and that's a good tap that time by Honey Bun. Push in the back. Melbourne will get the free kick through Brett Bailey. It's been a good contributor for them. Centres it. Chance for the big leapers down there in the forward pocket from behind. Should have gone for the uh, knockout instead of the mark, but Carlton are going to clear. And they do through Hartney. Short one back to halfback flank. Robertson has the mark. Sees a lead further afield from Dean. Dean a nudge in the back from John Fidge. And it wasn't Dean, it was uh, Buckley. Malin taps towards the boundary line. It comes back into play. They go down. Off the ground by Batterston. Picks it up. Back in towards the centre of the ground looking for Withers. Hands to it. Melbourne about to clear, but I think oh, a free kick. Great effort. Great and effort, Withers. And he gets the free kick. Sees a pass, goes right out wide and finds O'Donnell, who's got probably 35 yards to run. Malin putting pressure on him. O'Donnell kicks up into the forward pocket. Again, everyone trying to mark. Southby close to oh. the boundary line. I think that's out on the full of Melbourne to get the resultant free kick. We're eight minutes into the third quarter. 51 plays 24. And it's going to be O'Donnell from the half-forward flank. This is Kelly O'Donnell. That's the way to kick it. Towards centre-half forward to give yourself a chance. And that's exactly uh, what has eventuated. He, instead of kicking into that pocket, he kicked it to the centre-half forward area where Wilson had let out and marked in front that of the pack. That was an unbelievable play by the Carlton fellows. I've commented earlier about the fact of punching the ball away. Wilson, who is only a short player, should not have taken that mark. Well, there's the kick from Brian Wilson, nevertheless, and he's put it through for a goal. He's third. The Nissan Grand Final Savings Marathon is on now, and the savings are unbelievable. Here's Lou. The Heidel's fever has really got to these Nissan dealers. They've chopped $2,000 off the price of Skyline GLI sedans, and the savings on Gazelle and turbo-powered Balsas are unbeatable. But you better hurry, these savings end with the bounce of the ball this Saturday. Come alive, come and drive, Nissan. Well, there's the score, 8 9 57, Melbourne, Carlton 3 6 24. Not good defensive play by uh, Melbourne, uh, by Carlton allowing Brian Wilson to take that mark. Here's Ricky Nixon, the interchange player on the ground. It's on centre wing, Xavier Tanner just waiting for that ball to come out of the pack there, but the umpire, umpire Russo this time will bounce the ball. Coming off the ground is Honey Bun and Warren McKenzie replacing him in the ruck. And David Honey Bun started off well early, Don, but has faded. Yes, he has, uh, Peter, although he has got a lot of hit-outs in the ruck. Uh, you know, he's just lacked the aggression that he started off with. Well, there's Bailey getting the ball down to Tossel. He's ducked back and he's marked over the top of Peter Kenny. And this is definitely within kicking distance, about 35 metres out from goal on a 45-degree angle. Now, Peter Tossel missed the sitter in the first quarter from about 30 metres out. He didn't even make the distance. So, looks like he's going to torpedo punt on this occasion. He is a wobbly one, a Peter Hudson flat punt. And again, he didn't make the distance. So I don't know what's wrong with his kicking today. The ball is forced through for a behind. 8-10 Melbourne, Carlton 3-6, 58 plays, 24, a difference of 34 points. So a decisive lead at the moment as we see Malin Mark in the back pocket. 
Costa Southby under pressure. He gets his kick out towards the halfback flank. Tossel running out for it out there. And also Williams. Ball still loose. Hartney goes to ground. Good tackle by Tossel. What's the result? It's going to be a ball up. Obviously, Carlton have been instructed to handball and run at all opportunities. Saw that, by the way. Jeff Southby kicked out across to, uh, I think it was Malin, who Southby then followed up. So that's the instruction, I think. Kicked forward by Melbourne. In towards the forward pocket. Waiting for it down there is Gagan. Back to Southby. Southby now steadies. Pings it out to the halfback flank area. And there's a good mark to Melbourne. And that's been taken by Alday. He's been rucking all day. In towards the centre of the ground. In front was Batterston and couldn't take it. Withers in there also. It's loose. That was Rodney Wright. He has a chance to get it back again now, Wright. Dives on it. Carlton dive on him. No one can break away and there'll be a ball up inside the centre square. Eleven and a half minutes gone into the third quarter. 58 plays 24, so a 34-point lead to Melbourne. Wouldn't think they'd uh, relinquish that at this stage of the game. A chance for Melbourne again. This is O'Donnell. Round onto the left foot in the forward pocket. Centres it. In front. That's the time to go for the mark in front. Is that Hartney again? <clears throat> Been a good contributor down in that Carlton defence. But the Carlton defence have had plenty of work, so he's had the opportunities. O'Donnell from behind knocks it away from road, close to the boundary line, out and a throw in. Member side, half forward flank. Major goal scorers for Melbourne, three each to Wilson and Regolo. For Carlton, all single goal scorers, Sheldon, Ralph and Dean have kicked their three. Centre wing. Out on the floor. Melbourne to get the free kick. <clears throat> It'll be taken by John Fitch. You'd have to put in your best three or four, I think, at least, Don. Oh, just about the best, I would say, um, Graham. John Fitch from halfback. Good kick. Penetrating kick. Howe going for it. Missed the mark again. Melbourne handball to a Carlton player. And cop one high. Finally, they're booted up towards half forward. Melbourne knocking the ball away now and applying pressure to Carlton all over the ground. This is Paul O'Brien. Out wide. High kick. It's gone further out towards the boundary line on the outer side. Players running for it. Tossel out there. Picked up, sent forward into the forward pocket. I think that's going to be out on the full, is it? No, one bounce and over. So play transferring from the member side to the outer side and a boundary throw in on the half forward flank. 13 minutes gone, third term, and Melbourne lead by 34 points. Half forward flank. All day over the back, or ducking the head was Thorne. Dean. Now it's Peter Tossel and Teddy Fidge. Fidge hooks it back towards Batterston, who's been doing a lot of good, strong, heavy work today, Adrian Batterston. He's one of the players that gets in and gets it and feeds it out to the players running past. Carlton are a bit too slow in the major positions, Peter. They've got uh, Mark Buckley, Darren Auger uh, at, um, up on the forward line and Scott Howell at centre-half back. Just lack mobility and their little fellows are just not good enough. Kenny That's... Sheldon just hasn't put in at all today. Yes, I agree. As far as uh, lack of pace, there's... Uh, on the left foot, Rodney Wright, hooking it down towards the forward pocket. Oh, gee, that could have been interference almost against Gagan to Wilson there before the ball was within five metres, but the umpire elected to let that one go. There's Frank Regolo over the boundary line, caught one in the buttocks. They heard those. It's in that uh, halfway between half forward flank and forward pocket for the uh, Melbourne side as the ball's knocked back. Or Tommy Alvin, he doesn't know how to take a backward step as he charged through the pack. It's knocked away by Withers. Still there on the forward pocket area. And umpire John Russell will come in and bounce the it's ball. It's amazing, Peter, the people that keep their eye on the ball. You think they're going to get hurt, but they never get hurt, do they? Like Tommy Alvin, we saw Brendan Hartney before take a courageous mark in front. It's amazing. Well, all coaches have said that for many, many years, that you're less likely to get hurt if you're going after it. As the ball is on that half forward line, and uh, Carlton are in all sorts of trouble at the moment. 8 10 Melbourne, Carlton 3 6. We've been playing almost 15 minutes into this third quarter, and they're making no impression whatsoever, even though they have a star studded forward line, Carlton. As Don said, they do lack a little bit of pace. There's Brett Bailey ducking back after it. Here's Xavier Tanner hooking it back. Wilson ducking behind the pack. Up he goes. No mark. Kenny was in the man in front, the Carlton man, number 40, couldn't take it. And once again, in comes John Russo to bounce the ball right in front of the Melbourne goal. 
opportunity there for Wilson. If he hadn't have flown for the mark and waited down, he could have got the crumbs because he had a teammate going for it. He uh, looks as if he's like to take the big specky at the moment, Brian Wilson's. Kicked three goals. Kicked three goals, two, in fact. And there's going to be another bounce. It's about 20 metres out from the Melbourne goal in the forward pocket, out of side at the Jollymont end. Big knockout that time by Howell. Down to Hartney, out to halfback flank. It's all Melbourne. They lead by 34 points. 58 plays 24. 16 minutes gone. Boland, half forward flank. In towards the edge of the goal square. Almost a mark in there to Tossel, who brought it down to ground with him. And another bounce. Look at pressure in this game. A lot of body contact. Blistering pace shown as OJ comes out with it. Goes towards the outer side of the ground. Fidge from behind knocks away. Ball loose. Melbourne should clear. Can't bottle it up. It's interesting, Peter. We watched last year Collingwood uh, winning this grand final and not many of their players went on. You look at Melbourne's side, a different side. They're a younger side. I wonder how many of those players would go on and play league football? Well, it's a very good question. A number of them have played uh, senior football, but I know what you mean. How many will become established league players? We see Boland have the balls smothered. I think John Fidge would be a very, very good chance out of the lot of them. There's uh, Thorne, oh, beautifully taken away by Hartney. Hartney kicks it towards Harper. Now, Fidge just has to have tremendous ability to read the ball, and if you can read where the ball's going, then that's uh, what ability is all about. There's the left foot coming down towards the half foot, uh, centre wing area, actually. Tommy Alvin still trying his heart out. He won't give up as they go in after it. Uh, next to the boundary line, the umpire will bounce the ball. Well, what makes uh, John Fidge a good player is he's got a lot of courage. And it seems to run in the Fidge, uh, you know, his younger brother, who, or his older brother, who is not all that endowed for pace, but he's got tremendous courage too. Yes. And that's what makes him a good player. He oh. doesn't take his eye off the ball. I agree. There's uh, Hughes, but you also got to have that ability to get where the ball is. As Jack Dyer would say, it's no good being where the ball ain't. As you see the ball on centre wing, hand pass from Regalo to Danny <laughs> Fidge gets collared by two Carlton players. He had no chance to get rid of that one, and the umpire rightly so will bounce the ball. I, I hope for uh, Tommy Alvin's sake that he uh, makes it too as a, a regular senior player because he shows a lot. Still on the half forward flank, Howell, Ted Fidge knocked it away from him. He was about to kick Sheldon and Malin. I thought the ball over the boundary line, still in. Hutchison comes in from behind. Should have probably given away a free kick there to Andrew Graham, and yes, Graham will get it on the halfback flank. Out of side. Yes, he caught one right across the head there, Andrew Graham. And a penalty, which brings him to halfback. He kicks down to the wing, up high. Almost a mark to Alday. He got it on the second uh, attempt. Powell had the sit, but Alday up over the top. I'll tell you what, Warren Ralph would be getting uh, freezing down there at full forward. The ball just, the ball just. There is, uh, let's see, the second bite. Oh, just not, taken away. Not the quite third long bite. enough. Would have been a good grab. I was just going to say, the ball hasn't been down the goal square hardly at all, has it? Well, he should be moving up the ground and go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so he should be. How are you? It's a good tap on. Sheldon should have done more for a player of his experience. Down to the half forward flank. Mm. And uh, that's Dixon. No Glenn Boland. Pretty down the field, I think, Graham. So Boland will hand it.